Hello everybody and welcome to another Rise of Kingdoms video. This is Dragothian here and today I wanted to add another installment to the Commander Mastery series guys that, that's located on my channel. Um, it's been a little while since we've been able to do one of these just simply because of all the stuff that we've been doing in game with KVK and Osiris League and just regular arcs and everything. So I wanted to get back to doing some Commander Mastery guides. I've been getting tons of requests on getting talent builds and things like that and why I'm, I'm using this commander with that. So let's get back to the nitty gritty, the basics, the foundation of the game, which is understanding why you're gonna use a commander in the game and with whom you're going to pair them with. So with that being said, just, be, just as a reminder, this is a sponsored content channel for Rise of Kingdoms. So if you wanna find out all this good stuff, continue to come on back. Get a like and a subscribe going on the channel, and uh, let's get it kicked off. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and roll with Minamoto. Minamoto is one of the best commanders in the game, hands down. And he's a legendary commander. He's one of the least expensive legendaries to max out. Uh, if you put a, a dollar amount on any other legendary commander in the game on how to obtain them, which is usually either gold chest or... Uh, a Wheel of Fortune or a Mightiest Governor uh, or just again spending or working really hard as a free-to-play to max out the events that come out whether it's more than gems or recharge events or things like that it's really difficult to max out a legendary commander if you're not putting money into the game just gonna be honest so with that being said Minamoto is one of the least one of he is the least expensive legendary commander that you can max out in the game. More importantly, you can use him forever. I mean, this is a commander that does not go away. He's that good. He's super versatile. He's got three specific skill trees that lend very well to all parts of the game with cavalry, peacekeeping, and skill. And again, just good value. One of the best value commanders in the game from a legendary standpoint. So. Let's jump into the skills. Uh, this is a commander that was out at the very beginning of the game when it first came out a year ago. So most people should know what these skills are, but let's go over them because we have new players joining the game. And we also have people that just haven't really paid attention to the skills. So let's go over the first one. This is his main bread and butter skill. It's his active skill. <clears throat> and this is the, where all the damage comes from for Minamoto. So deals direct damage to one target. And then in addition, when he's expertised, has a 75% chance to deal additional damage. And again, remember additional damage versus just regular damage. Damage factor 600 to, to the target each second for two seconds. So let's do some math. When he's expertised, 1400 damage factor right off the bat. Then has a 75% chance to deal an additional two ticks of 600 damage equaling 1200. So 1,400 plus 1,200 is 2,600. Now, it doesn't happen every time, but when you're expertise, it's pretty regularly. I would say, again, three out of four times this will proc. That being said, in PvP, you tend to get this to proc a lot because battles aren't over in an instant. So this is a very valuable skill in PvP. And then again, we'll go into the PvE pieces of it later too. But this is a, one of the best da like skill damage skills in the game. Um, even Frederick, who has uh, the, the 800 times 3, so that's 2,400, it is 100% of the time when he's expertise, but um, this is still even higher. So this is actually one of the highest nuking commanders in the game is Minamoto, especially if he can flag off those uh, two additional damage factors um, if it procs on that 75% chance. This is a quality skill. This is a must-have. Obviously, if you're going to get Minamoto, do not unlock him past the first skill until you get this skill to rank five. You need to have this first skill at five. I do not want to see a screenshot from you later down the road with one, five, two, four Minamoto. It's going to make me cry and I'm going to point you at this video and you're going to say, I didn't know it was all my fault and it's okay. But that being said, best skill in the game um, as far as commanders go for, uh, for basically a free-to-play legendary commander, uh, and again, one of the best and most highest damage nukes in the game. Second skill, very standard, but also very nice. 10% march speed, which is always good for cav, and then another 20% attack bonus, which again, for cavalry, you want 
particular bonuses. You want March Speed, you want Attack, and you want Skill Damage increases. So Ottoman Civilization is definitely a good one to have if your main focus is Cavalry Nuking. Same thing with Archers um, as well. Um, defense and Health can help, but you really want to maximize what you're good at in this game. So if you're going Cavalry, if you're going Archers, you want Attack bonuses because that directly affects the skill damage bonuses that you have in the game. But again, self-explanatory on the second skill. March Speed bonus, Attack bonus. Here's the peacekeeping piece. So um, most peacekeepers will have one or the other or a combination of the two of a damage to barbarians component or a um, experience bonus whenever you kill barbarians. Um, some of them have both, um, which you'll see in my mastery guides and we can go over those. But um, this one has a 50%, which is huge, 50% damage dealt to barbarians when uh, by troops led by this commander. So um, good for forts, good for just regular barbarians, good for Kerouac, good for Kerouac bosses, basically anything that's a PVE content, so not PVP, um, the bonus will apply, which is very nice, very, very nice. But also, again, for PVP, this third skill is absolutely worthless. So let's take that into account. Four skill, um, also really, really cool too. So troops normal attacks have a 10% chance to increase damage taken by the target. Now it says increase damage taken. It doesn't say increase troop damage taken. It says increases damage taken, which means theoretically that if you can get the skill to proc either from this commander or whoever you have as primary or secondary in the pairing during this next three seconds, it'll have a 30% skill damage and troop damage boost, which is really nice. Really, really nice. So Troops normal attacks have a 10% chance to increase damage taken by the target by 30% for the next three seconds. That's a huge, huge thing. I know it's a 10% chance thing, but again, you tend to be fighting with this guy for quite a while. So this procs quite often. And then also, um, it's taken by the target. It's not just your commander. So if you attack a target with Minamoto and you've got five armies swarming it, and this procs, and then you've got multiple skills procking on that person or that barbarian or that fort as well, um, this will stack with everything else that's hitting it too. So very, very effective on the battlefield, very, very effective in PvE, just all around a great skill. Uh, effect can only trigger once every five seconds. It's a three second skill, probably going to take about five seconds to trigger anyway. So that's pretty sweet. I like that. Very, very nice. And again, the, the expertise basically increases the chance for the first skill from 50 to 75. That's all it does. So um, it is useful because, again, that's a lot of extra damage that you're getting and 25% or uh, a quarter percent, you know, a quarter more percentage chance to proc that additional damage factor is really, really nice. So I definitely recommend getting this guy maxed out for sure. The expertise is worth it. And again, the cheapest by far, and I'm saying by far, commander in the game to expertise. If you're going to put money into the game, this is a good investment. You will use him forever. You will not see a point in the game where you're not going to use him for something. Okay. So that's the skills. Again, some of the best skills in the game. And again, one of the commanders that has been around for a long time and just has not worn off. Like it's not been one of those commanders where you start off and he's the best thing out there, and then a couple months in, and you've already outgrown him. This is not Minamoto. Minamoto, he is standing the test of time, and again, I don't see a point anytime soon where he's still not going to be usable, especially with those kinds of skills uh, that you have in your arsenal to bring to bear. Okay, so let's go over talents. Now, I've got a few builds. <laughs> I've got more than this, but these are the ones that I, I tend to switch between every once in a while. Um, this is the one that I've kind of optimized a bit because there's some things that I like in all the trees. And um, in the peacekeeping tree for battle, so PvP, when you're attacking other players, other cities, other objectives in Ark of Osiris, players on the battlefield, open field fighting, this is the one I tend to go with. And the reason is, is because I have almost every single, if not every single, march speed that I can get in all the trees. So you got one here, you got one all the way over here. Now, 
Reducing skill damage taken is a huge deal, so you want that, right? And that's something you're always going to want to get. But here's some more March speed. I want to say it's over here maybe. Yep, here's another March speed. It's all stacking up, plus the skill that we just went over. This guy's kind of speedy, uh, especially as a primary. Even with not having the mobility tree, he's still pretty darn fast, okay? Now, the thing that I sacrificed, which in this build, again, I use this build with Saladin. So with Saladin, he does not have any additional damage factor, okay? So that first skill that Minamoto has, he has a 1,400 damage direct nuke, and then he's got two second procs of additional damage factor for 600 each. So this skill, Latin power or latent power, um, this would only be effective on that secondary damage, not the primary, just the secondary. So when I paired him up with Pelagius, who is almost fully additional damage factor, or um, there's other commanders out there like Frederick. Frederick would be another one that would work very well with that. Mehmed is also one that would work well with that. So there's tons of other commanders that have, Osman is another one. Um, there's tons of other commanders that have the additional damage factor component. That's what this is for, additional skill damage. That's, that's what that pertains to. It's not the main nuke, okay? So now that I've got him on um, pairing with Saladin with my group of five nuking armies, I don't tend to put too much into this particular skill because it's not as effective as if it was applied to both commanders. Now, if I paired him again with Pelagius, with, um, with all the other commanders I was just talking about, this would make a lot more sense, and I'm going to show you the other build for that one too. But this is when you're pairing Minamoto as primary with a, a secondary commander that's not that does not have additional damage factor. Okay, so I got all the goodies. I've got charge. I've got um, rejuvenate, feral nature, clarity. I've got all the skill damage taken and skill damage bonuses. I've got everything. Okay, you got all the goodies on the skill tree. Um, you got all the defensive things on the cavalry tree along with all the march speeds and another march speed on the peacemaking tree. This is my best overall build that I use in the open field when not pairing with an additional damage factor commander. Now this one. I wanted to go as hardcore full nuke as possible on this one. So I still got the emblazoned shield, which is a skill damage reduction because that's like a must have. You've got to have that. Um, when you're PvPing. Now, PvE, Barbarians don't really nuke that hard, so this isn't really that big of a deal. But for PvP, you're going to be going up against other Minamotos and other Genghises and YSGs and Edwards and Alexes and Mehmeds and all these other nukers, okay? So you need to have a Blaze and Shield. It is a must-have for any PvP build that you have on the battlefield for a Cavalry Commander, okay? But I wanted to have the ability to have the most nuking damage in the game and when I pair him up with again a Frederick a Pelagius um, Osman um, you know you know folks like that that have that additional damage factor I wanted to give them the maximum additional damage factor bonus and I also gave them naked rage this is a little iffy um, I could have put those three points somewhere else but again the build purpose for the second page that I've got is strictly for max, max, max damage. So this would be good for a cavalry rally if you wanted to, because especially if you're rallying something that isn't necessarily a city that's got 10 million troops. If it's got a, if it's a city that's got equal or less troops than you, or it's an objective in Ark of Osiris or something like that, this works really well because you're going to have that edge when you're doing your skill damage. And then on top of that, all the extra rage from Feral Nature that you're going to provide you lose uh, a little bit out of Undying Fury, but three rage every normal attack is not the end of the world to lose. Uh, I wouldn't worry too, too much about that. And really the only thing we're missing is some uh, some attack here, which 3% attack versus 6% skill damage increase. Your skill damage is so much higher than what your attack, your troop attack is going to be. So I think the, the, the damage output is bigger on Naked Rage than it is on these three uh, attack points for your cavalry units. This is my max damage build. So if you want maximum damage, this is the one you want. It's got still got really good march speed. I did snag the one from Peacekeeping just because it's right there. Uh, I can't give that up, but then I lose a few here. 
Um, other than that, it's pretty close to being just as speedy, but it get, just gives you way more damage um, than, than the other build. Now, this is a Peacekeeper, okay? So he is a Peacekeeper as well. If you want him to be focusing on that and you're using Minamoto as a second on the battlefield, that way that this talent tree does not apply, um, you can spec Minamoto like this. He can give you uh, increase the skill damage dealt to barbarians and other units by 15%, which is huge. Get some extra goodies whenever you're killing barbarians and things like that, which is always good as well. Some more march speed is always helpful just to get around and kill barbarians faster. More XP, less action points used. That's the standard bread and butter peacekeeping build on any peacekeeper. Okay, This is the same tree that you'll use on Belisarius, on Boudica, on Double C, on um, <laughs> Markswoman, uh, on Ethelfled, all of them. Okay, Then on top of that, you've got the skill tree which again is where the majority of your damage is going to come from, especially when you're killing barbarians. So we spec'd it all the way out to Feral Nature again, got your Clarity, got your Rejuvenate. Um, I did put a couple extra points that were left over from the rest of the build into, into Latent Power, um, just because it's better than putting two more into 1% attack or 1% defense. I mean, there, it just didn't make sense. There was no other place in here that made sense to me to put two more points. Even this one, normal attack damage dealt, Increased by 6%. I'd rather increase the skill damage by 6%. <clears throat> the additional skill damage by 6%. That number, that base number, is higher than what your troop damage factor will be. So this is your peacekeeping talent build. Okay? So we went from overall open field PvP right here to have maximum movement speed. You got, this is the highest damage... Uh, skill damage build that I could figure out for Minamoto in the game. A little more squishy because he's not as fast, but uh, overall just more damage all around. And then this is your maximum damage for Barbarians, movement speed that you can get into um, without losing a lot of skill damage and the skill stuff from the skill tree. So that's the way to go. All right, one last thing. I'll bring it up real quick. This is the pairings. And again, for it's been a little while, so let me re-explain. The left side that you're looking at, that's got the helmet, that's your PVP pairings. The right side with all the little wheat, that's your PVE pairings because farming and PVE go hand in hand. And um, those are your PVE pairings. And then I did a quick summary of him actually just overall summarizing this roughly gonna be about 20 minute video, okay? So on the left side, Genghis Khan, the best commander in the game for cavalry, bar none. He's got the most nuke damage in the game for a cavalry commander. As long as you have full cav, that's actually a really good pairing. Ca uh, Genghis Khan primary, Minna secondary, Minna primary, Genghis secondary. It does not matter. Um, well, it does matter because Genghis Khan's got a little bit of a different uh, third tree than Minna does, but I still like either one. The builds are roughly the same. Uh, in fact, I may even go that second page on Minamoto um, just for Genghis um, because of the, all the skill damage that he does. Next is double C. That's been the bread and butter for Minna nonstop. So Minna double C is the gold standard uh, if you don't have Genghis. Um, that's a quality, quality pairing that will never go away again because both of them are really, really good. And with uh, Minamoto having the skill damage tree versus double C having the mobility damage tree or mobility tree, always put Minna first in that pairing. With Saladin coming out, he's brought some versatility into the game, especially when it comes to cavalry pairings, because he's got that skill damage reduction and the healing reduction, uh, as well as a very solid nuke as well. Uh, also some very good stat bonuses to go along with what Minamoto already has too. So Minna Saladin would be my selection for primary secondary whenever you're open field battling. Uh, that also makes the Cav Commander group of Minna Saladin very tanky because of Saladin's crowd control type skills where you reduce the healing of the person you're attacking and you reduce the skill damage you're taking by quite a bit as well. So um, anything you add Saladin to is going to make it more tanky. And if you've got a really solid nuke or on top of it primary firing off nukes nonstop, uh, you're going to be in really good shape and you're going to be able to last quite a long time on the battlefield. Pelagius is my other pairing again just simply because they synergize so well Pelagius gives you more rage He gives you some heals, which is really nice. And again, he synergizes really well with the latent power skill 
uh, or the talent latent power in the skill tree. So I, I for the longest time, until I got my double C maxed and my Genghis maxed, um, I always used Mena Pelagius as my pairing on the battlefield, and they did really well. Again, lasted quite a while because of the heals, and then more importantly, again, the synergy between the additional damage factor and the normal damage factor really worked well, and you weren't really wasting any points anywhere. So it worked really well. YSG is always a good pairing for anybody as a secondary commander. He works so well. The second skill is the only skill that really is pertaining to archers. So the first skill, the third skill, and the fourth skill all work really well with any type of nuking commander. So YSG is always a great pairing. If you've got a max YSG, you can always put him as a second to Minamoto or any other nuking commander for that matter. And it will be a fantastic pairing and you will not be disappointed because of the skill damage increase, the rage re uh, regeneration, the extra skill damage coming from that second commander AOE version style. It's all good. All of it's good. Alexander, with being a new commander as well, I wanted to throw him in there. He synergizes also pretty well with Minamoto. It, there's a lot of infantry style skills on Alex, but there's a nuke on Alex as well, which is really nice, which tends to trigger very often. Uh, also, the expertise of Alex really synergizes well with uh, Minamoto's fourth skill. So there's a lot of damage reduction and uh, damage increase going on with that pairing. It's actually really nice. I've done a little bit of testing with it, and uh, they put out some significant damage. And then again, out with Alexander being an infantry-style commander, he's got a few tanky-style um, skills that lend to cab as well. So it all works out really well. And finally, Osman is another free-to-play option. When I say free-to-play, epic version of a secondary pairing to uh, Minamoto. I would definitely make Osman second. Um, he is the best uh, epic nuker in the game. So his the amount of nuking damage that he does is absolutely fantastic. And again, paired with all those other skill damage builds that I just showed you will work very, very well. And again, some of his skills are also additional damage factor. So if you have latent power on that, like on that second page of the, um, of the talent builds that I showed you, that would also get benefit from that. So I would definitely recommend pairing up Osman if you don't have any of these other ones leveled up decently enough to feel like you're going to be comfortable on the battlefield with them. So that's your PVP. Okay. And those are all rock solid choices. You cannot go wrong with any of those. Any of those will be very, very nice. Pick and choose which one works for you and which one helps you have that much more of a solid troop army on the field so that you can use other commanders for other armies. Let's go over to PVE and I'll, I'll give you a quick rundown on these just because again, PVE is very straightforward. You've got barbarians, you've got forts, you've got Kerouac, those types of events. So the reason I have double C over Genghis Khan, you can certainly have Genghis Khan over double C here as well, just because of how much skill damage he can do. But double C also has a peacekeeping component to him. So he's got an additional 20 or 30%, 25% maybe uh, damage to barbarians. So if you're pairing up men of double C, um, you can definitely look at putting out some significant damage to barbarians open field, and then also barbarian forts whenever you're doing those rallies. Okay. Genghis Khan, again, same reasoning, tons of damage, synergizes really well. He's a cavalry commander. He's the best one in the game. Saladin will also work again. That being said, he's not generally used for PVE, but he can be used. Pelagius, same thing. YSG, same thing. Belisarius, Boudica, and Ethelflaed are all peacekeepers as well, and they all have a barbarian damage component to them, which is why I put them on there. And most of them also have a rage component as well. So it's really helpful to have those if you don't have any of the, uh, the legendary commanders above, with the exception of Pelagius not being legendary. Um, those three epic commanders will work brilliantly on all those other things that you're doing. Um, just as you get later into the game when you've got KBK going on and you start to see these level 8, level 9, level 10 barbarian forts, that's when you don't really see the return on those three peacekeepers pairing him up with Minamoto. At that point, you're going to want to have a double C, a Genghis, you know, even a Pelagius will work, but really double C or Genghis is kind of the gold standard for doing a rally um, on a fort that's that size. Uh, you can still do level four and level five relatively easily with those three peacekeeping commanders. But again, once you start getting into KVK and those fort tiers start going up a little bit, it can be very difficult for you to take those down without taking heavy losses. And again, Osman. Osman's just great. He's a great nuker. He's a great second to any nuker in the game. 
you can plug any of the names on this screen primary with Osmond secondary and you will have a solid pair. So that will also work for PVE as well. Okay, to, so to summarize, and there's so much to summarize, but these are the three key points. And then uh, the fourth one being kind of the downside. Uh, first one, obviously, again, least expensive legendary commander in the game. If you look at it from a, a dollars and cents standpoint, if you're not spending into the game, this part doesn't obviously apply to you, but that also means that it's going to take you eight months plus to completely max out a legendary commander, and you better be active. Okay, if you're not active, expect that time to be longer. All right, but he is the least expensive legendary commander to max in the game, hands down. There is no other one that's even close. Okay. He's extremely versatile. So again, look at all the names on this list. And really, I could have gone through and named probably another five or six that he would have worked with if that's all you had. So this guy can be really, really used. And we didn't even talk about Garrison, right? Like he's a great second to a Charles or a Richard and Garrison, preferably Charles, or a Sun Tzu with Minamoto. That's a really good combination too. You want to have obviously a Garrison commander primary, but he's a great secondary to, to start ticking out a lot of damage from your city on that rally. So this is also, again, very usable in every phase of the game. That's why this, this commander is so good. So extremely versatile is, is the second one. And I think that's plain to see. Uh, third, uh, third check mark here, good for early, mid, and late game. Again, this is one of the original commanders to come out in the game. He was the, he is the, the only way you can get him, and I guess this is probably a good thing to say in his commander guide too, uh, is if you are purchasing the VIP chests from level 1 to 9 or 10. I'd have to take a peek at it because um, it's been so long since I've bought him. <laughs> uh, but that's the only way you can get him. And if you want to get him at least 5 one, 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 it's very inexpensive. 5 or 10 bucks and you're good to go. But if you want to max him out, that's when you need to start buying the big boy packs and um, get the... VIP 8, 9, 10 packs or so, um, which is, again, an investment, but, again, still the cheapest one in the game that you can get. But he's one of the best commanders because of all the other things, but he's good now. He's good, just as good now as he was when, on day one when people were getting him and running around killing farms all day because that's all there was to do. So having him, he's going to be good regardless, and he's going to be good for quite a while as well. So if you have not gotten him yet, and you have not maxed him yet, what are you waiting for? You definitely need to get this done, and um, you will still be able to use him for quite some time. He is my He's the leader of my second army on my presets bar in PvP. So he, this guy's nothing to sneeze at, and uh, I definitely like him. I definitely will continue to use him. Now, again, the downside. Just like I said, you have to spend to get him. He, he's not in the loot chest for the gold keys. He's not in what Mightiest Governor. He's not in the wheel event. He's not in anything. You have to spend... To get him there is nothing you can farm in the game to get him so you have to put some money into the game to get him but again i think just this past well this ended up being almost a 30 minute video apologies um <laughs> he's got so much going on um he's worth it he's definitely worth it i hope this this guide has shown you how much how much worth he has to your account and to your city he can be used in almost any situation and be really good at whatever he does. He's not a jack of all trades, master of none. He's a jack of all trades and master of most. So uh, with that being said, I think I'll go ahead and wrap it up here. Let me go ahead and drop this uh, picture down again so you can see the second one. I think most people are going to want to look at that one and this one here um, for their talent builds. Um, with that being said, this is Dragothian here, and I wanted to wish you all just a happy week. And again, I really appreciate you all um, growing the community, growing the brand, growing the um, the channel with me. Uh, I really appreciate all the time that you guys have invested with me. And I love spending time with you guys. So um, just wanted to give a, a quick shout out to all of you out there that continue to watch the videos, continue to like and subscribe and all those good things. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and knock it off here. And I hope you enjoyed this new installment to the Commander Mastery Series. Cheers. I'll see you all next time. Have a good one.